this block with the story about secrets. And I think now we are starting to perhaps find out some of the even bigger secrets. Because now is the time in any murder case you start looking for past answers, and sometimes the past actually comes to you. Tonight we have someone who claims to be from Chris Watts' past. Chris Watts' recent past. Now we are not going to show you this person because he wants to continue his life without consequences for speaking out in this case, but we are going to let him tell his part of how he connects to this story. Um, this is a story that we have to be honest with you, we can't independently verify, but it is a story that could be extremely telling as we try to figure out what happened in the Watts family. This is a man who claims to be Chris Watts' former lover, and he joins me now live. Sir, can you hear me okay? I can. Um, I won't use a name for you, and I understand your panic about um, having backlash in this very public story. This is a very public case, but can you tell me how it was you first met Chris Watts? It was on an app. <clears throat> and what kind of an app was it? It, it was kind of a social media app. The app's called Meet Me. And when you met him on this app, how did he present himself? And what was the nature of him connecting with you? Um, he messaged me. It seemed all very innocent at first. On the profile, it didn't have a last name or anything. It just had his last initial. He was listed as straight and not bi or homosexual. So I was kind of off put by it. And then we talked for a while and he just told me he wasn't really out or comfortable being out. But, but eventually you met him in person and, and take me from there, what happened? Correct, I met him in person. He came over, the first time we met, he came over to the place I was staying in Loveland, Colorado, which is pretty much a neighboring town to Frederick. And when you met, um, was it clear why he was there? Did, was it clear that he wanted a romantic relationship with you or did that develop in time? It was clear that he was interested in in me and attracted to me. And how soon was it that your relationship turned romantic? That night. How long did you continue um, a sexual relationship with Chris Watts? Off and on until March or April. So how does that time out? Is that about nine or ten months? Yeah. And during about, that time, about ten months. sorry, go ahead. About 10 months. We originally met in June last year. Okay. And during that time, did he ever tell you that he was married or had children? No, I found out when we were both out and about. Well, I knew he had children. He told me he had children. But he portrayed it. He portrayed that he was single. And when there was some point in January, late January or February, that I met up with him and I got in his Ford pickup. And he had his daughters with him and the oldest pretty much built the beans that he was still married. She asked him, I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. Um, she asked him if she could sleep with him and him and mommy tonight. And that's when I found out. 
just moments ago, very shocking new allegations about that Colorado family man who stands accused of killing his wife and his two children. We are still talking to a man from Chris Watts' past who claims to be his former lover. We are not showing this man's face. We are not naming him. He is concerned about his life and about backlash. We want him to be able to continue living without fear of speaking out to us. We want to make it very clear. We sought this man out so that he can tell his side of the story. However, we can't independently verify the details that he describes, but we are going to continue speaking with him. This man who claims to be Chris Watts' former lover. Sir, can you still hear me? I can. Thank you so much for staying over the break. I do want to ask you your reaction when you heard the news that Chris Watts' family at first was missing. Um, I actually didn't even hear that they were missing. I, my ex-fiance knew that I had had relations with them and I didn't hear anything until after the bodies were found. And what and was then your reaction got, then? Um, I felt ill. Did you reach I, out to him? To Chris? Yes. No. After that, no. When you, when you found out that he'd been arrested, did it ever cross your mind that he is the man who did this? No, but no and yes, because, um, yeah, just through life experience, you never, you never really know someone, and you never really know what someone is capable of, and the way he portrayed himself as this victim and the way he just made me feel sympathy for him for going, you know, living this life and living this lie and going through all this and told me that if it were to ever come out that he would be shunned and he wouldn't be allowed to see his girls. I just, I really didn't know what to think. My first initial reaction was that I just felt ill, I felt nauseous. Did you ever see any tendencies in Chris Watts towards violence? No, he was one of, one of the most gentle people I've ever met. <clears throat> Did his behavior ever change from the moment you met him uh, a year ago in June until you split with him in, I think, what, April or, uh, or May? Um, yes, after that, I got a text from him to where it was very, very, very passive aggressive. And he had never showed that side of him before. And and can you can you go a little deeper there and tell me what you mean? Like what was the text? What did the text say? He flipped it around like I was the one in the wrong. He told me I did him dirty. He told me that I shouldn't have had all these empty promises, which there were no promises to him. I didn't promise to run away with him. I didn't promise to do any of that. And that's the way he portrayed it when he texted me.